Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission, Commission special meeting. Uh, today's meeting is a discussion around our uh, Hampton Beach Transportation Master Plan and Transportation Grant that uh, we have DOT administering for us. I, uh, I welcome uh, those out in the audience, especially our town officials. Thank you very much for uh, taking time today to, uh, to come to this meeting. Um, this is our third public meeting uh, on this subject, and um, I'm going to turn the meeting over right now to William Rose, who, who is our project manager. Uh, for the, uh, and then he'll uh, give you some uh, background and then introduce Gordon Liddy, who is our transportation consultant. William. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, I'm William Rose. I'm the senior planner with the Department of Transportation and the department's lead on this particular effort. So what I'm going to do is just provide, uh, it's been a while since the original award, and I just wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page and caught up as far as what we're up to here with this project. And uh, give you some details about the process forward, and then, as John indicated, we'll turn it over to Gordon, uh, who represents VHB. VHB is the consultant to the department and is doing a lot of the detailed analysis that's resulting in some of the, the alternatives that he'll be talking about. If you're not aware, uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission applied for and received in 2012 a Federal Highways Transportation Community and Systems Preservation Grant, uh, or TCSP as it's known. 2012 was the last year of the program, so it was one of the final awards made in that program. The total project that they applied for was a $375,000 project. That's an 80-20 share, which means Federal Highways provide 80% of the funds, and there's an expectation that the community provides the remaining 20%. In this case, uh, the 20% is being provided through uh, what's called soft match or in kind match, so services and time in lieu of cash. And so we're really talking about a $300,000 project. And in 2012, the Area Commission approached the Department of Transportation and asked us if we would be interested in managing the project on their behalf. So the department is working for the Area Commission in partnership with four and DHB is under contract to the Department of Transportation. We're all working towards the same goal, though, and talking about opportunities to improve the goal. So 13 and 14, we're primarily focused on transitioning to the department's management and the consultant selection process. We finally got a consultant on board uh, in, in uh, 2014, and that's also when we did some supplemental traffic counts to figure out what's going on in the lettered streets find out where traffic's moving, at what volumes, and where there may, be, may or may not be issues. And we had our first public meeting, if you remember, last June, uh, where we brought folks in, sat down in small groups, and talked through what, what everybody was interested in seeing for improvements and where areas of concern exist. Following up to that, uh, there was some extensive social media outreach that was conducted. There was a Facebook page and Twitter accounts. We did some interactive polling uh, to find out what the public had for thoughts for those that weren't able to attend the meetings, for example, if there were thoughts that they'd be interested in sharing or other issues that we weren't made aware of. And throughout uh, the, the remainder of the summer and early fall, VHB was busy coming up with some proposed alternatives to address a lot of those concerns that had been raised by the public. And those were presented to the public in October of last year. So since October of last year, the last time we had publicly appeared to talk about some of the alternatives, there were a couple of things that happened. The first was the HB went back based on a lot of the comment that was received and took another look at some of those alternatives, looked at some other opportunities uh, where something that they may have proposed may not have been the best fit, looked at some other options. Uh, and Gordon's going to talk more about that in a few minutes. We also, based on some conversations with area commission members, uh, expanded the original scope of the project. So when we originally started this effort, it was from the Hampton Bridge uh, to Borset. And that was the limits of the project. Based on some discussions, that scope was expanded all the way out to Winnicott Road. And so those, uh, everybody will be seeing those recommendations for the first time this evening. We also held uh, the area commission chair, John, uh, the Department of DHB met uh, with 
local officials, so the town manager, police and fire departments, and public works. Uh, and we also sat down with representatives from Dread at their offices in Concord to talk about specific concerns that they may have with the operation of any of the alternatives that were presented and to hear whether they had some additional ideas that they wanted to offer for consideration. So that brings us to this, to this afternoon. Our intention with this meeting is for Gordon, again, to lay out what the final recommendations are from VHB based on all of that comment and feedback that we've gotten and some additional considerations that have been made in the intervening period. Uh, and we're also moving forward from this afternoon, moving to a place where the Area Commission is going to consider the proposed alternatives that VHB is going to present. And there's going to be some consultation with the various constituencies that the Area Commission members represent to find out what folks think uh, about the different alternatives that are offered. And then at the end of the summer, early fall, we're looking to bring the Area Commission back to endorse some preferred alternatives and give some final guidance uh, moving us forward beyond just talking about uh, preferred alternatives but establishing them as what, what's going to go in the revised Hampton Beach Area Master Plan. So, once we identify those preferred alternatives, the intention, and I've spoken of this before, so if you're at other public meetings, I apologize, but the intention here is to go beyond what we traditionally think of when we do a plan update. Right? We do an update, the plan gets put together, and then it goes on a shelf and sits for some unknown period of time. The intention here is to find concepts that the public strongly can really get behind, that the town supports, and that the Area Commission obviously endorses, and to use uh, to use those options to move forward in this project to advance those options uh, as far through the design process as we can with the funds that we have available to us. So it's not just we're saying, boy, it would be nice if we did some lane reductions or added some additional lanes. We're actually going to start talking about the details of what's involved in doing that, what are the drainage considerations, beyond just saying there are considerations, but what are they physically and what are we talking about in terms of estimated and this all lines up uh, with what's going on with the t current draft of the 10-year transportation plan for the state of New Hampshire. If you've not had an opportunity to take a peek at that, um, starting in 2018 in that plan, we've identified, or the plan identifies, uh, that we in the state intend to spend just under $300,000, around $290,000 uh, for additional PE. So to take what we do here and advance that further into engineering design, uh, looking to further refine, identify other feasible options. And then again, uh, in 2019 and 2020, carry it all the way through the entire engineering design process. In 2023, we're looking at right-of-way, potential right-of-way costs, and this all culminates in 2024 with just under $7 million identified for construction. So total, uh, in the 10-year plan presently, not including what we're spending on this project, we're talking about $9.2 million total uh, that's been dedicated in that plan to Ocean Boulevard. So with, with that, I guess I'll ask if there's any questions. Yes? My understanding was you were going to be training in 2020. Well, Bill, do you want to speak to that? <laughs> <laughs> Your information is newer than ours, Senator. Well, I talked with the top chief today, and I understood her to sure. say 2020. And, and I'll clear, I guess I'll clarify. What I'm basing that on is the uh, June 6th draft of the plan. So that was the last time I think that the Senate kicked it loose. So if there may have been changes since then. Right. The sooner the better. And other questions? William, I'd just like to make a, just sure. an additional comment. Um, because I think the general public needs to understand that <clears throat> If some of these improvements that um, you're going to be talking about tonight, that's going to come to the Beach Commission and ultimately to our organizations that we represent, um, if some of those uh, recommendations involve Ocean Boulevard, um, it's going to be connected with uh, what we have already been working on, as you had said through the master plan, uh, the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, which then would include a new roadway, uh, sidewalks and, and uh, drainage. Now, saying that, William is correct when he says that right now we have in that budget, if you will, a little over $9 million. 
Um, we think, uh, and this is just based on pure uh, guessing, if you will, that an entire reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard will probably be somewhere in the area of 16 to 17 million dollars. Saying that, what the intent will be from the Beach Commission is to work with the money that we have now and work with the money that are, is coming in over the next couple of years through the tr transportation uh, plan, but also to go out and to um, seek federal funding uh, to look at other funding sources at the federal level to help support the cost of the entire reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, we, I want to make sure that people understand that this is not a $9 million project um, that we're talking about when we talk about Ocean Boulevard reconstruction. It's more towards the 16 to $17 million. So I just want to make sure that that's clarified for the, for the public. Okay. Thank you, John. Any other questions before I turn things over to Gordon and you can hear about the things you're really here to hear about, which is what do we want to do at Ocean Boulevard? Gordon? Thank you, William. Uh, my name is Gordon Leedy. I'm a landscape architect and planner with VHB, and we're the consultants to the department. Um, we've been working with uh, the Department of Transportation and DRED. Uh, I was part of the team that did the state park. Uh, redevelopment project so we've been in Hampton for several years and uh, I think we've got a pretty good handle on what's going on here uh, and as William indicated last year we went through a, a fairly extensive um, a public comment and back and forth with uh, with the Commission and with uh, with other stakeholders and uh, we'll talk about kind of what came out of that uh, that process in a few minutes but um, what we what we did most recently was, uh, as William indicated, we expanded the study area, and that goes uh, that was authorized uh, back in March, uh, and it basically takes the study area and takes it all the way north to Winnicunit uh, Winnicunit Road. Um, so we did an existing conditions inventory much like we did uh, with the original project and mapped sidewalks, uh, bicycle and transit accommodations. We mapped uh, and inventoried the existing parking. Uh, we took, uh, we, this was not part of the area where we had taken the counts back in 2014, so we didn't have turning movement counts for the traffic volumes, uh, but we were able to kind of back into uh, some numbers uh, using automatic uh, traffic recorder uh, station data that is available through the department. So we had some traffic data, but it's not as extensive as what we had in the rest of the beach. And we mapped environmental resources. Um, so this is uh, just a, a, an indication of what that additional uh, project area uh, was. And as I said, it goes all the way up to Winnicunit. Uh, in looking at this, and we can talk about this a little bit in a little bit more detail in a few minutes, but uh, it kind of makes sense if we're doing this to, uh, in my mind, to actually extend the project all the way up to the next kind of bend in the road where the lane drop is, because as you'll see, what we're suggesting is a re an actual reduction from four lanes to two. Um, as exists north, like up, up toward Northampton. Um, the traffic volumes all substantiate that lane reduction. There really isn't a need for, uh, for four lanes. Uh, and what eliminating that single lane of traffic does through most of the corridor is it gives you room to do parking, to do, uh, to do bike lanes, to do adequate pedestrian accommodation. Uh, and really sort of bring the roadway up to uh, what would be modern standards. This is a very old roadway. Uh, the last plans we could find, I believe, were from the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, so that was the last time there was a project in this section of roadway that we could, we could find records of. Um, so 
And the infrastructure kind of kind of shows that. This is a, uh, a map of uh, the various shoulder widths and so forth, and I won't, I won't uh, bore you with, uh, with the details, but suffice to say that the roadway is deficient in many different areas. Sidewalk widths, uh, shoulder widths, uh, there are, uh, there's no uh, accommodation for people who are mobility challenged, ADA type, type issues. There are limited uh, crossings, pedestrian crossings of Ocean Boulevard, which seem, seems kind of counterintuitive since, you know, if you're on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, you probably want to get to the east side of Ocean Boulevard because that's where the beach is. Um, and then we, we also inventoried parking. So, uh, and that's parking all the way from Church Street down through, uh, through the, uh, the Winnicunit Road uh, intersection. So we took all of that information and we kind of, uh, we, we developed two alternatives. One of them is, uh, well, they're both fairly similar as you go through Boar's Head and, and the difference really is in, in the treatment of the intersection of Winnicott Road and, uh, and Ocean Boulevard. But we had come up with this idea, the notion of, uh, of reducing the lane, uh, the, the four lanes to, to two, and in this case, uh, this, is, this is Church Street here, and you know, we're taking, taking one lane out and providing a center turn lane. So you actually have a three lane section you would have a uh, six to eight foot sidewalk. It kind of varies uh, in terms of how wide the, uh, the right of way is. You would have a landscaped area, and then we take the parking that currently is in the center of the two, uh, the two roadways and push it out toward the beach, much like the state park uh, functions today down on the south end of, of the corridor. So you'd have a separate parking lot with 90 degree parking that goes essentially from from the turn at, at Boris Head all the way up through to the Ashworth. What that does for you is it allows a pretty significant increase in the number of parking spaces. And we also have, uh, have identified a site uh, just to the north of Church Street for a potential additional bathhouse. Because when we talked to, uh, when we talked to Dredd, they suggested that that would be a really good thing since you know, essentially, we're we're extending the beach up to Boar's Head, uh, or the the heavy use area of the beach up to Boar's Head. Um, this particular uh, uh, option, just counting from Church Street down to Boar's Head, uh, adds you know the existing parking spaces. There are 274 angled spaces from Church Street down to Boar's Head. This would provide 346 spaces, which is roughly uh, 72 additional spaces. So it's almost 20% more parking uh, than exists today. Uh, as we go further down toward, uh, toward Winnicunnet, or up toward Winnicunnet, uh, again, you've got this kind of strange situation where you've got two lanes in each direction and you've got parking in the middle. And there's very little pedestrian accommodation, much like some of the other sections of the corridor where, you know, it's been paved and paved and paved. We've lost the curb. We've lost the definition of, uh, you know, what is the pedestrian area, you know, the sidewalk and what's, what's the road. Uh, there, are, um, there are utility poles and signs and everything kind of in the middle of the sidewalk area. There is a, there's Parking that's allowed on the west side of the street—it's uh, a temporary, you know, a short-term parking thing. But the the fact is, there isn't enough space there to get a car off of the road without blocking the sidewalk. So uh, that all is is kind of is is not a good situation. It's it's uh, it, there are some safety concerns, and certainly uh, it's not accommodating all of the potential users. So. In this case, what we're calling for is a parking, uh, parallel parking on either side of, uh, of Ocean Boulevard. Where we have additional space toward the intersection of Winnicunnet Road, 
uh, provide a parking area. Uh, in this case, it's 47 spaces, and I'll, I'll get to what the differences are here in a moment. But that's really where the beach is. There isn't a lot of beach as you go south toward Borzev. Uh, and so the parking, uh, the parking in that stretch of road up to Dumas Avenue is really uh, there for residents and uh, for, for visitors. So, and then improving the uh, geometry of the Dumas Avenue intersection with a turn lane northbound, I mean southbound, and uh, sort of closing that up right now, it's probably 150 feet of pavement. Uh, that just is kind of a free-for-all. And it allows us to do a couple of things. It allows us to have a safe crossing for, uh, for pedestrians with a little island that provides a, an island of refuge, if you will, in the middle of the street. But it also allows you to do uh, to have some green space there that uh, that could be an attractive little kind of entrance to the uh, to the uh, the Boar's Head neighborhood. Uh, and again, this is uh, this is in this case uh, we're proposing a roundabout at Winnicott Road. This is about a hundred and it's 140 feet uh, diameter, so it's uh, it's perfectly. We uh, we <laughs> ran uh, turning templates and got the biggest semi truck uh, that is on the road today uh, through there with no problem. So it shouldn't be an issue for uh, emergency vehicles and so forth. Um, but this allows you to take that uh, take the the uh, the lanes uh, from. Winnicunit and from Ocean Boulevard and you know account for that lane reduction you don't have any standing queues in those in those locations you have uh, it's kind of a rolling queue because people are are making their turning movements and and uh, you know, that's how that's how roundabouts work so uh, it's perhaps a little less frustrating than a uh, than a signal might be um, it, it probably is about the same cost as a signal. Yes. Is that showing King's Highway becoming yeah. a dead end is the recommendation? It is. And the reason being that uh, this is too close to that intersection. So, you know, there is the ability to get in and out elsewhere. So that's the, uh, that was the thinking with that. So that is perhaps a downside of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the roundabout alternative. But this has an additional, from here up to Dumas Avenue, existing parking is 136 spaces, proposed parking is 156 spaces, so that's 20 additional spaces. And that's kind of, that's an approximation because we really don't have all of the information we need on where the driveways are on the west side of the street, so obviously you can't park in front of the driveways, and we need to think about Yes, Fred. There's been a lot of discussion, a lot of questions raised about the possibility of having yet another bathroom up in this area, but it's been too dangerous to cross the road. With this thing here and that, that uh, additional, it looks like additional parking on the bottom. Yes, and there is additional right parking there. here, and is there, there, there would be. Absolutely. We're doing that? Absolutely. Because that would, that would uh, Actually, in either of these concepts, there would be uh, additional space, because when you when you clarify what's going on at that, it's, it's kind of a modified roundabout the way it is now. And when you uh, when you make that more efficient, it takes up less space, and, and there would be space for other other facilities. Yes, Senator. Okay. The uh, southbound lane on the north side of Church Street. Would there be ability for that hotel to have a pull-off so that they can actually bring their guests in? Um, what we've done. I go back. Maybe I can go back. Um, well, can we can we hold on to that question and, and we'll talk about that in a moment. I, sure. Are you talking about the Ashworth Hotel? No, no. I'm talking about the Ocean Oh, okay. Yes. It's just at the corner of Church Street. Oh, 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 oh. No, she's yeah, talking no. about. There, uh, Skip's place. We haven't. Um, there's some more detail that is required in that area. They're likely, depending on what alternative is chosen, there are likely to be uh, right of way impacts at that intersection, at the Church Street intersection, 
primarily on the south side of the, that intersection because the hotel that you're talking about is right on the north the northwest corner um, there isn't a lot of width there now and you know so we're well, they used kind of to be able to pull cars off there and, and the uh, lanes were pushed over a little bit in that area and the lanes have been shifted in so it's really no room for it now so i'm hoping that Well, we can take that into consideration. Uh, the uh, so the other concept is uh, to signalize this intersection, which, as you can see, has you know it still has significant additional green space, uh, but it you know the intersection the roadway becomes a little bit wider at that location because you need turn lanes and uh, you need space for queues. So. Uh, based on the traffic information that we do have, the traffic volumes, we need about 250 to 300 feet of, of space here for that left, uh, for the left-hand turn onto Winnicunna, and we need a similar amount, 200 to 250 feet, uh, for the uh, for the southbound right turn queue, or the you know these turning movements need to have about 200 200 to 250 feet. Uh, there's less of a demand uh, as you head, uh, so, you know, from the southbound uh, direction. Uh, but right now, this really is a, uh, it functions as a right turn lane, a dedicated right turn lane. Uh, it's got to be a thousand feet long, and I don't think there's any real justification for that <laughs> in terms of traffic points, but it's the way it's striped today. Now, one, what I talked about before was you're going to do this lane reduction in this area all the way down to the Ashworth. This area uh, up to the next bend in the road is four lanes. It's only about 1,200 feet. So if, if this becomes a uh, reality, it makes little sense to me to have this be four lanes and then it goes back to two lanes. Yes? In concept, is there much real difference between this intersection here and the high street intersection farther up? It looks like it's kind of the same thing. There's a light there at a T intersection. Yeah, I'm not and familiar with that, but this is a pretty standard intersection. Yeah. I mean, it's it's got turn lights. It, it works well at high street. I'm yeah. wondering, would you expect it to work well? Well, it's well? just a matter. You can do the, the, the information that we have on uh, traffic volumes in this area and it's a little sketchy but you know we've done our analysis and we we anticipate a more than acceptable levels of service for you know for this inter intersection for the foreseeable future so does it dead end um, Kings Highway too? this does not this you would have a median across here so you couldn't take a, a left hand turn out you could do a right a right turn um, there may be a way when we get into it that you could do that with in the roundabout alternative as well, but I, I, it, because of the because of the size of the roundabout, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that that's uh, that's possible. So, so that's that's the northerly part of the of the study area and. Uh, you know, there is more work to do in terms of understanding some of the details, but in concept, I think that uh, this would provide adequate uh, or more than adequate uh, pedestrian accommodation, would, would provide bicycle accommodation through this section of road, would improve the aesthetics by providing a little bit more green space, which would allow you to deal with, there's a grade issue in there where the, uh, the the boardwalk is quite a bit higher than the roadway, uh, so if you reduce the width of the road, you can deal with, with that grade issue uh, a little bit easier, a little bit better. Uh, and so I, I think this is kind of a win, regardless of whether we're talking about a roundabout or a signalized intersection, improvement of this area would, uh, would it would be good from a number of different, uh, different viewpoints. Uh, the, We've talked about the drainage issue. The you know it's kind of a sticky situation because 
in in fact we would you know both of these alternatives would reduce the amount of pavement out there which is a good thing from a stormwater standpoint uh, any kind of road reconstruction would require uh, stormwater uh, quality treatment uh, and would require I mean since we're reducing pavement the uh, the volume reduction or, or detention if you will uh, may not be required but you would have to treat the runoff to to reduce pollutants in the, in the runoff stream uh, the fact is that virtually this entire part of the corridor is is with the exception of the road everything off the road is in the hundred year floodplain so and you know so there, there's a limited amount of uh, there's, there are limited options on what can happen with the drainage. So, you know, if it's in the floodplain, it's going to flood, uh, is, is the bottom line. So, but improving the, uh, improving the, uh, the drainage in the roadway, improving the conveyance of drainage uh, from the roadway uh, will likely, in normal situations where you have, you know, storms, you you probably would have better conditions and better uh, better operation of, of the of the, the drainage system. Okay, so and this is a this is just a section of the road uh, that we're talking about. You have uh, two 12 foot lanes. You have two six foot bike paths. You have a two foot. Uh, verge, if you will, to keep people from getting uh, slammed by doors uh, from from parked cars. You have parking on each side. You have a variable uh, uh, width of uh, uh, boardwalk on the uh, on the east side, and then you know we're proposing a six foot sidewalk on the west side uh, with a variable panel at least four feet uh, to provide for utilities and so forth uh, outside of the sidewalk. And then this is just where you have parking. Uh, the idea is that we would have that 90 degree parking off of the uh, off of the roadway, uh, and be and have essentially the same roadway section. But there are you know there are there is that one part of the uh, corridor down near Winnicott where we have room for uh, off street parking. So just to refresh everybody's, well, actually, as a, as a result of the uh, discussion that we had with, uh, with ten, the town and with Dredd and others, uh, after we, uh, we prepared the, uh, the last alternatives, uh, one of our senior principals came up with what I thought was a really brilliant idea. <laughs> So we looked at it, and basically the idea is to take. There was there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of people that were uncomfortable with the notion of what would be a net lane reduction. So if we make if we make Ocean Boulevard uh, through the main part of the beach, if that is to be one lane, which is what really accommodates parking, bikes expanded sidewalks, loading, you know, all of that. You know, we, the, the proposal was to make Ashworth two-way. And the, the original concept showed, and I, I can show you pictures of this uh, in a few, minutes, a few moments, but the original concept was for a three-lane section. So you have one lane southbound, one lane northbound, and a center turn lane. Well, so there were some valid questions that came up uh, through the process uh, in discussion with uh, particularly fire and police that basically said, well, you know, how are you going to, we've got two lanes in each direction now, so you're telling me that we're only going to have one lane southbound and that's all going to work great. And so what this alternative B2 is, is it takes the center turn lane and it makes it a southbound lane. So we still would have, if, if Ocean Boulevard turns into a one-lane road, we'd have one lane northbound on Ocean Boulevard, we'd have one lane northbound on Ashworth, and we'd have two lanes southbound on Ashworth. And functionally, the center turn would 
it would function the same way as the Senate term, because the demand is far higher to the east than it is to the west. So, um, so we drew that up, and it, it seems to fit uh, actually really well. And this is a, uh, this is, is a, uh, a section and, and plan of the roadway. We have a seven-foot sidewalk on the west side, a 12-foot lane, an 11-foot center lane, a 12-foot lane, and a 7-foot sidewalk on the east side. Uh, and that's the 49 feet that we have at the most constricted point. So the, the Ashworth Avenue right-of-way is 49 feet at its worst, uh, or at its, at its narrowest. So anything we do uh, needs to fit within that, within that space. Um, so, and that would allow us to, uh, to, it would allow us to do what we, or at least consider do, doing what we would like to do on Ocean Boulevard. So let me just, for those of you that haven't been with us for the whole process, let me just go through quickly what the original alternatives were. We had uh, this alternative, which is, uh, a two-lane, one-way southbound. So basically, it's what you have today on Ashworth Avenue, but with improved sidewalks and improved streetscape. So, you know, one of the things about Ashworth Avenue now is that the pedestrian accommodation is not acceptable. Uh, it's not uh, handicapped, handicapped, uh, or it's not ADA compliant. Uh, and so. Uh, in any, if there are any improvements made to, to Ashworth Avenue, we really need to fix the sidewalks. So that's essentially what this uh, would do. And this uh, section is two 11-foot uh, lanes headed southbound, a, a bike lane, a 5-foot-6 shoulder on the, uh, on the west side, and then 8-foot sidewalks on either, on either side. So. You know, it's, it's a good two-lane road with a dedicated bike lane. Um, the second alternative is to make, uh, make Ashworth Avenue two-way. And uh, with a center turn lane, as I mentioned, and with, with sidewalks. The downside of this is that you, you lose the ability to do the dedicated bike lane. So you would have... Uh, you would have basically a shared use uh, of bicycles and, and cars. Um, and that this is the section with a six foot six sidewalk, a one foot um, a shoulder, uh, an 11 foot lane, 12 foot center turn lane, and then same thing on the other side. So essentially you have three, uh, three 12 foot lanes and a six foot six sidewalk on either side. And you would have to share, the bikes would have to share that. The advantage of having the center turn lane is that it allows you to sort of get around a bike if you need to. There wouldn't be anybody in that lane on a full time basis, yes? Wouldn't it be preferable to have, if you, if, if you adopted a scenario like this, to put the bike lane up on Ocean Boulevard? Mm -hmm. Who's out riding a bike that wants to ride on o Ashworth? Well, we'll be up there looking at the ocean. We can talk about that. I mean, the uh, we, we can talk about. It. We'll, okay, we'll talk about that. Um, so, in fact, we'll talk about it right now. The uh, the you know Ocean Boulevard South is you know the the issue is that there isn't enough sidewalk uh, by any means. There's a five-foot sidewalk that in many places doesn't really exist because the curb isn't, is buried in pavement. Um, that five-foot sidewalk is, is you know, challenged by, by being asked to accommodate something like, uh, I, I believe that the count was uh, somewhere around 1,500 pedestrians per hour. Uh, which is a lot of people moving in a lot of different directions, and it's uh, it, you know safety is compromised by the current situation, uh, but yet we're constrained in that you know here's here's the section that we have it's uh, it's a five foot five foot sidewalk it's an eight foot uh, 
uh, service lane that is the yellow striped area out there. There are two, uh, two 10 foot, uh, I believe, lanes. There's a, a, uh, a verge or a, uh, a shoulder on the east side, and then there's parallel parking. So, you know, between, and then there's also a, uh, a sidewalk in the, uh, in the kind of median between the, the state park parking area and the, uh, and, the, and the roadway. So we're really constrained by having that, um, you know, we only have from the building face on the west side to the uh, westerly curb of the, uh, of the state park parking because the state park parking doesn't belong to DOT. And it doesn't belong to the town, it belongs to Dred, and it's a major source of revenue. So we're, we're sensitive to that. Um, and in fact, the parking along Ocean Boulevard, the revenue from that also belongs to Dred. So uh, in discussions with them, you know, if you, just to put it into context, there are, it, I can't remember exactly what the number is, but I, I believe it's 76 parking spaces, 76 or 79 parking spaces between the casino and the uh, and the entrance to the state park parking area. Um, so the revenue from that is roughly it's like eighty-five thousand or ninety thousand dollars a year. So you know what the commissioner of, of Dread basically said was. For state park said, which park would you like us to close <laughs> if that if that revenue goes away? Because that really is the revenue that supports it supports actually I believe two two park properties uh, on a for a year. Um, so it, it really for me it put the it put the uh, put the revenue per, in in perspective uh, and and indicated to me how important it is. So, you know, we've, we've come up with uh, a couple of different options. And one is what I would call a, a kind of status quo option, which could be done if Ashworth remains one way south. Um, you have two, two lanes on, on Ocean Boulevard northbound. Uh, you have this loading area uh, or, you know, it, it, it's a, uh, we're, we're calling it a flex area. It's not parking, but it's, it's an area that's available for, uh, for, uh, for businesses to use as loading. Uh, you have a, a, an ample sidewalk, 10 to 12 feet. You have uh, a bike lane, and then you have this, uh, this landscape area between the, between the parking and the state park parking and the, uh, um, and, and the roadway. The downside of that is that you'll notice that there's no on-street, there's no parallel parking there. So those 79 spaces go away. We can replace them also elsewhere in the corridor, uh, but importantly, we would have to do that first because <laughs> you wouldn't want to eliminate the parking and then say promise them, you know, the promise them the parking uh, two years later. Two years later. <laughs> so. Um, so that's one option. The other option uh, is to actually do that lane reduction in Ocean Boulevard where you have a single lane, single 12 foot lane. You have that shared, uh, that shared, um, or, or the, the flex space, the, uh, the, the loading space. You might be able to have a little bit more of a sidewalk, 12 to 14 feet on the, uh, on the west side. You have a bike lane and you have that parking. Uh, so, and you certainly could conceivably turn this into this at some later date. I mean, you could phase it so that, uh, you know, you could do, you don't have to do the lane reduction all at once. Um, but the fact is that, that the sidewalks are desperately in need of improvement. And for a variety of reasons, for uh, to to accommodate uh, uh, people with disabilities, but also uh, we think there's a there's a significant safety concern out there. If you stand at the, you, you probably have all done it. You walk out there and see how people use the space. 
and people are kind of wandering out into the road and you know it's not a good situation it also creates um, the way that pedestrians use the use the corridor um, really exacerbates the traffic uh, congestion that exists out there because you have people essentially you know, crossing wherever they feel like it and uh, they're uh, I'm I don't know how many, you probably could tell me how many people get hit by cars out there. I, I believe it's not zero. <laughs> I think that's an accurate statement. <laughs> so um, so the, the issue is that we have, you know, we need to put 10 pounds of stuff into a five pound bag. We only have so much width. So if you need to increase the sidewalk by, uh, you know, 2x, then something else has got to go. And it's either the parking or it's a lane. And so and we've already talked about the parking. Um, the lane is certainly, we're confident that, that the traffic can be accommodated in a single lane uh, as long as Ashworth is, uh, is made to be two-way. And there are some uh, important uh, benefits of making Ashworth two-way. And the benefits are that no longer is, does everybody need to recirculate. So you cut down on the recirculation, and by doing that, you can cut down on some of the congestion on Ocean Boulevard. You also have more options for exiting the beach. So no longer does everybody have to go across the dang bridge. You know, they can, they can uh, get out, go north on Ocean Bull on, uh, on Ashworth, and exit on Brown Ave, on Island Path, on uh, or go all the way up to Church Street. So you have a number of different options available to you. Is it is it possible? What, one of the concerns that has always uh, been the, the, the current system is that there's not enough capacity on the roadways to get people out on the south end. Now, assuming that a bridge comes along in the future that a com that has greater capacity. Would not having Ashworth as two lanes south and one lane north now, would it not be possible to make Ashworth three lanes south? You would still have a northern capability uh, with a single lane for for the exit from major major events at short oh, periods of time. Yeah, you could. Uh, I mean, one what of we the, do for seafood festival now, where we make it two ways. Yeah, you, you could conceivably do that. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do. Uh, the one of the issues on making Ocean Boulevard one lane was a concern that was voiced uh, regarding, you know, what happens when Ashworth floods and, you know, you have, or what happens if there's an emergency on Ashworth and, you know, you have things shut down, how do you deal with that? Uh, I think that there could be enough pavement to handle two lanes on, on Ocean Boulevard. You'd have to cone it off, you'd have to control the traffic. But there's enough width there with a 12-foot lane, a six-foot sidewalk, and, and, and uh, you know, perhaps the parking um, that you could, in an emergency situation or in a, in, you know, you could, you could make Capability is there. Um, so, so, that's kind of the that's kind of the conundrum is that um, in order to sort of keep traffic moving the way it is, you have to get rid of significant amounts of parking in that in that corridor. Uh, and you know, I I see some s pretty significant benefits to making to having the having the the two way Ashworth uh, and to having the single lane. Ocean Boulevard because it really makes Ocean Boulevard uh, a beach thing. It, it it no longer really even needs to be a through uh, road. And in fact, uh, in some of the alternatives that we presented, uh, if you were to um, if you were to make uh, if you were to do a roundabout at let me not is that Haverhill which. What's the Haverhill's the beginning? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Haverhill is on the south end. Yeah. 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 On the north end, the entrance to the beach is Ash Ash Highland. 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 I knew it was an H. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you could do a you could do a roundabout at, at Highland, 
you would need to make uh, Highland two-way, which has some potential issues, but that would be a really interesting gateway to the beach. Because right now you come in and you kind of get to Ocean Boulevard and there really isn't anything there. Um, if you did a roundabout there, you could, uh, you, you could have, it, it would serve as a really, a really interesting gateway. The kind of downside of that is that it would require two things. It would require Hi Highland to be two-way, and it would also require Ashworth to be two-way. And you would really need to make uh, Ocean Boulevard dead end. So that's a big change. I mean, I, I get that. Yes? Uh, can we get onto the safety issue of Ashworth being two lanes, two, two directions too? Sure. You had mentioned 1,500 persons as far as pedestrians walking across the roadway. They don't all park on Ocean Boulevard. A lot right. of them park in the back parking lots, whether right. it's the town lots or the municipal lots. Right. As it stands right now, they're crossing two lanes of traffic traveling in the same direction. If we're going to widen the traffic lanes and then they're going to be crossing three lanes and they're going to be crossing opposing traffic, how is that going to be safer? Well, I mean, it's no different, really, than than yeah, than any other kind of urban situation. I mean, people need to watch where they're going, and people need to people who are driving need to watch out for pedestrians. So I'm not saying that you know you're correct. The volume it, of pedestrians in this in that environment isn't the typical volume of pedestrians in a in a two lane one lane opposing situation this is this is a pedestrian traffic area that's what it's for and you know there's the it's not just adults it's not us it's moms with kids in tow crossing three lanes of traffic I just I, are you thinking well, signaling are you thinking no I'm not thinking we're not thinking about signals um, the um, and just to be clear I don't think that it's going to be in fact I, I I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be more pavement it's just more lanes. So, because right now you've got a six foot or an eight foot, uh, you've got an eight foot uh, shoulder on the west side and you have the bike lanes on the east side. That kind of, for me, nails it right there that that's an impossibility for us to function public safety wise. If we're not gaining any width in the lane and we're just going to fit a third lane in there, you've just negated our ability to do our job. In terms of what? Getting to the other end of the beach. Well, I mean, you still have two lanes in in a you you would you would have. I, I guess I don't quite understand what the concern is because you still have two lanes in in the southbound direction, or you have one lane in the center turn lane, and you have a, a lane in the northbound. Now direction. we have them going in opposing directions, whereas right now people trying to watch what's going, they can work one way, they see us coming. Now they're going to work both ways. It, it's a formula for disaster, in my opinion. And I, I only base my opinion on living on Hampton Beach and working there since 1979 for what that's worth. That would be a problem if we did that. Okay. Um, so moving moving up toward uh, the Ashworth Hotel in the northerly section, um, right now you've got this kind of funky situation where you've got parking in the middle, uh, you've got two lanes northbound, two lanes southbound. As we've discussed, the traffic volumes in that area, with the exception of turn, you know, turning movements into uh, what is now the only exit from the beach, which is Church Street, with the exception of that, uh, you really only need one lane in each direction. That's what the volumes are telling us. Uh, you need a significant queue to handle the left turns uh, onto uh, onto Church Street, and you need to, you know, our, in our opinion, you need to make improvements to that intersection because right now the pavement is only 12 feet wide uh, on the Church Street side. Um, when when we are uh, your traffic studies done, were they done in the summertime? Were yes. they done? It was August of 2014. Right. I believe it was early August of 2014. I just, having lived down there my entire life, other than the past 10 years, but I live in this town and I know that area very well. Um, 
I just can't see dropping to one lane on either way and uh, having that be functional. Uh, especially, uh, I'm listening to the police chief and the fire chief talking about getting around. They sometimes need that two feet to get around. You talked about the parking on, on the south end, um, but you've also said they're going to gain parking spots. Right. And you're saying that and it's, a, it's a swap. And you, you know, you're saying that the, the Commissioner Dredd doesn't like that. Well, quite frankly, we, we fund most of the state parks in this state. We need to have a function for us. Uh, if they're going to, if the net gain is going to be the same in parking spots, if they have to, if they have a, um, a year or two where they have a, a downfall, well, then, but to make it the right work right, I think that's a better solution than trying to crowd it down because Dredd doesn't want to lose 76 spaces, which they're going to pick up in another area. Well, and the point is that you have to, you have to give them the 76 spaces before you eliminate them. It, it's a phasing thing. Well, it could happen. Well, are the 76 spaces in the same southern area, or are they way up the north end of the beach? No, they're at the north end of the beach. So that's just that's not practical either, because there is never enough parking for people there to just go to the beach and go to the the stuff that's there already. You, can, you know, you can't get well, any. There, there is there is enough parking. It just isn't where people want it when they want it. Yeah. I think they did a recent, fairly recent survey Everybody, that shows that there is adequate parking, but it isn't where they want it. That's what. That's what. The, again, the inventory says that you know, obviously, people want to park at the beach. They want to park at the south end of you know, the south end of the beach in the state park parking area. Mm -hmm. Obviously, not everybody can park there, and so. You know, if you look at the overall numbers, um, there is, in fact, not counting the you know seafood festival and spe you know, special events like that, there is more than enough parking in the beach. And in fact, the state park parking area uh, is usually only about sixty percent occupied. Very underutilized. Very underutilized. And I, that's. That could be. So you could run a shuttle or do whatever, you know, to get people, move people around, and we've discussed that. Um, but, um, you know, and, and you could do other things to incentivize, uh, incentivize parking, you know, make it cheaper to park there than it is to park at the beach, you know, do, do demand, uh, demand sensitive uh, uh, payment, which they have the ability to do because they went to the pay and display thing. Right. So they can change that, you know, like that. I just think losing that width there and losing that whole lane. Yeah, what we're talking about there is just the area between essentially the casino and, and the, uh, and, um, I don't know, um, Haverhill Street. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think losing that, you, you're losing, I, I, I don't see it. I, I think it's a, it's a definite detraction from, from losing a whole lane for that that area. And I'm thinking public safety wise. Well, on the other hand, if you went with two ears on the back street, you could also have a good walking pedestrian area because you could shuttle them from uh, from Ocean Boulevard down and out and up so you could have a good walking area on the main beach. That's right. In not to disagree with anything, because I think all these points made by, by our public safety uh, officials, and, and Rusty has a lot, a lot of uh, experience in that area, has lived there for a long time. But I, I recall during the earliest days that the discussion of what do you do with Ocean Boulevard goes back to the earliest um, uh, Faye Spofford uh, master plan or that's correct proposal right there. One of the arguments was, and this is just to put it on the table so it's being considered, one of the arguments was that during Seafood Festival, the, the two-way traffic on Ashworth Avenue, uh, there were, the, 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 it was extremely safe and it was easy to, to handle. Now, I don't know what other context you might have to apply to that, but that was, an, that I re strictly recall, clearly recall that being part of the discussion with very little objection to that from that point of view. The only thing that was an objection to making Ashworth Avenue two-way was loading and unloading for any businesses that were on the west side of Ashworth Avenue. That was the right. entire argument against it. Right. Other than that, there was the original discussion was going heavily in the well, direction of 
two way for Ashworth. And, and that's and just to put it for what was said at that time. I do remember it very and clearly. And the other thing that you know you need to keep in mind is that you know one of the issues with Ocean Boulevard and with the beach in general is that the way it functions now, you you need to uh, if you're in Seabrook and you want to go to Northampton or you want to go to Church Street, you've got to go through the main part of the beach. And you have no choice. And similarly, you know, if you're headed south, well, if you're headed southbound, it's like, it's really not that big a deal. But headed northbound, I think it's a significant issue. And, um, and it adds to the issues that you have on, on Ocean Boulevard in that there's driver frustration that you have to come, you have to combat. You have, I mean, it's not a good situation. And by uh, by dealing with uh, by by making Ashworth two way, uh, you take some of that off the table. You also take a lot. You take some of the recirculation off the table as well. I mean, some people want to recirculate. Some people want to cruise. And you know that's just the reality of it. But uh, there are people who want to get somewhere too. Yes, sir. But I can also see, like at Brown Ave, like you mentioned, getting on and off the beach. You mentioned uh, Island Path. You're going to have such a bottleneck there if you do not put traffic lights there mm -hmm. to have people waiting to turn. Right. And I think that will be a, a significant, especially Brown Ave, where you have the police station and the fire yeah. station coming out there, trying to get out onto that stuff. It's hard enough as it is with the two lanes, each direction, <coughs> one on one street and one on the other, without having that problem. I, and I think I see that as a is a big problem. Well, there are two places where we've looked at uh, we've looked at signals. One is at Highland, and the other is potentially at you know Brown Ave at, at 101. Because uh, if you have people coming out that way. You know, there may be something that need, needs to be done. Yeah, there. that's that's at the north end. I'm talking about get, getting fire apparatus and getting police cars on onto the beach. Mm -hmm. If you've got two way traffic trying to turn on the Brown Ave, which right now it only comes one way and they come in and it gets crowded as it is, you get two way traffic there. That area will be so blocked up by people trying to get off the beach that you will never get a fire truck or a police or a police car out of the, either one of those stations. Earlier in one of the presentations we had, I had asked about, you know, have distribution studies been done? Uh, you mentioned today that, hey, one of the benefits will be that other people can go out brown. They can go out, if we make Highland two-way, you can go out south. The first thing I think about when you're saying direction in both ways on Ashworth, what is that cue in, at the intersection of brown and Ashworth, of how many cars are now sitting in either the turn lane right. or the right-hand lane who is now going to stop dead traffic, waiting for two lanes to come across, and now I've blocked, uh, the it's really horrible, F G K L M N T whatever, right, right. you know, whatever that is, right. and now everybody going, yeah, I don't do it We did do, well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have so that. So I'm very concerned that that is a huge nodal point when yep. you're talking traffic studies yep. that makes or breaks even the discussion on right. can that work? Well, we did do a Q analysis, and it was it was less than you would think. Uh, I mean, there That's was all based some on how it's distributed. Right, right, right. And You're I think that right. if everybody coming from the south decides, well, you know what, I don't want to sit in beach traffic today. I just wanted to go out, get some pizza, and come across, you know, and go home, or leave from Seabrook to get down to Winnicott or whatever they're doing, that. That is just, you foiled, the plan's been foiled. There are a lot of people coming in that direction. It's and the longer the queue, the hotter it is. Nobody to make, will make the turn. Left turn. And then now you are at an intersection where there is emergency. I mean, it's both fire and police needs to get out at Brown. So, I mean, that's just, that is a, as much as it doesn't seem like a bottleneck, that is a huge bottleneck point yep. when no, you're talking I, I get that, about the two right? direction. We've looked at that. I just don't have the I don't have the, the numbers with me yeah. today, but uh, I can certainly supply them to you. Um, and the what happens is that you get by giving people options for getting out of the beach, you really help with 
that, you know, right now, Church Street is a mess. I mean, it, it can take you, um, um, it, when, when I stopped to deliver something at the seashell to the, the chamber office, and it was three o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday, and everyone I came in contact with said, good luck getting off the beach. <laughs> so if that, that's a point that's, that I think is on all of our minds. I'm with you on distributing people further out, but you said before, it's sort of taken that 10 pounds and put it in a five pound bag. Did you study, did the study take into effect the next layer out, which is really usually the problem, is we can push them out. So we're talking the boulevard, we're talking out Ashworth and Ocean Boulevard, but they all go to one place, to Route 101, to a very small stop sign. Right, right, right. Before they go up. Right. Right. Well, so that's what I was talking about. That, that area needs to be understood in terms of in terms of uh, that's traffic the whole deal. Right. When it backs up to those points, and similar to, to Mr. Rice's point of the big bridge, it all goes over to 286 into one lane and four sets of lights there. It's that's not just getting off the beach and traveling. It's those points. Right, right, right. So while we'll, it sounds like it, it's <laughs> very open to a lot of these concepts. Our concern is always from public safety's discussion of moving around. We've got some pretty good experience in moving around the things that planners plan differently, but we have to do. Right. Um, and so that's our concern is when everything backs up, which it does during its, maybe not all the time, but the critical times, how do we do our jobs? How do these folks do their jobs? And that's really what we're talking about. It can look prettier and have nice trees, but if I can't get a fire truck there, that's a problem. Back to Fred pointed out about the traffic that we've done that with the seafood fest, but let's go back to the history of that. When we first did that, it was a disaster. It's all these things we're all talking about, getting around trying to do our jobs, was just difficult. That the traffic was backed up everywhere. The reason it works so well now is because we have shuttle parking. We yeah. shuttle a lot of people in, which boosts up the traffic. So that's why it worked. If we go with a normal flow of traffic on the 4th of July or uh, Seafood Fest with that configuration without shuttle, then we're going to go back to what the Seafood Fest was prior to getting the shuttle parking, which was a nightmare. And, and that's what... Chief, uh, on Seafood Fest too, you bring in traffic control. You have people directing. Yes. For, for that reason alone, you have personnel standing in the street saying, go this way, to right. point. Right. And understood that if the road changes direction, uh, everybody will learn that over time. But where does it where does that happen? You know, um, during construction, after construction. Right now, they're bringing in a significant amount of resources just to direct people to, to go on a certain path. One other aspect that, that hasn't been brought up at all yet. No, I don't know. I can attest personally that the traffic on Ocean Boulevard northbound in the summertime has been bumper to bumper, stop and go five miles an hour for at least the last 70 to 75 years. That's personally attention to that. And we've got pictures of it being just that bad. Everybody's seen the one that's taken looking southbound with all of the cars, uh, all the tin lizzies uh, out there. And by having two-way traffic on Ashworth, you have the option when you come across the bridge of a, a call it for a lack of a better word, an express lane of Ashworth or the scenic route, whatever you want to call it, up Ocean Boulevard. And right now, the situation that has existed there for the last umpteen years is it's about as unhealthy as you could possibly be. We've got people drowning in carbon monoxide out there, and we don't, we're not paying any attention to that. That is a significant downside for the future. And I'm not a big tree hugger, but I do know that that's an unhealthy condition down there when you get people walking along, sucking in the exhaust from 10,000 cars every day. So if there's any way to alleviate that and get it moving, I think that's one of the bigger problems we need to address. As far as crossings, we can use blinkers, we can use traffic calming. There were a lot of things that were in the original uh, well, study for traffic calming. The, uh, to, to that point, I mean, one of the things that the lane reduction on ocean does for you is it allows you to, uh, it allows you to cross less, you know, less paid with, you know, all of those pedestrians. And that's where, I mean, are there people that walk up and down and through Ashworth? Absolutely. But the bulk of the pedestrian activity, particularly the clueless pedestrian activity, is is down on Ocean Boulevard, and uh, so and 
just by looking at which side of the intersection, you know, and I believe that we kind of tried to take that into account when we did the uh, when we did the state park project. But having the pedestrian crossings on the uh, on the north side yeah. of the intersections is important yeah. because it allows people to take those right uh, those left turns off of Ocean Boulevard without potentially hitting a pedestrian. And I know that you guys did a a, uh, a demonstration project or whatever toward the end of last year where you actually had traffic control uh, at. I believe it was up near the casino uh, where some of the really challenged pedestrian vehicular con uh, conflicts are and you know that helps um, we may want to at the end of the day consider uh, a barriers that channel pedestrians uh, to appropriate crossing spots but you can only do that if you have enough space for the pedestrian nice looking barriers yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, so you know even if it's even if it's a rope with, you know, like bollards with, with a rope, a nautical theme or whatever, something to tell people that they shouldn't be, you know, they shouldn't be just walking out into the street there. Uh, you know, I, I, I look back at, you know, any, anybody who's been to Las Vegas, I mean, talk about pedestrians, they have pedestrians. And <laughs> you cannot, you know, you, you cannot physically cross Las Vegas Boulevard. You know, they have fences up in the median, they have fences up at the sidewalk, and they have overpasses. Well, I mean, we're not going to do overpasses, but just channeling pedestrians to appropriate crossings, I think would, you know, in any case, regardless of how many lines we have, would be an important uh, consideration. During the process for the pavilion and, and the, the, the previous project that was down there, the process had several public hearings, and at each one, you brought in a lot of information. Uh, your, the team that you were a part of brought in a lot of information, made changes in re response to that, and then presented it again. We went through that through two, three, or four iterations and handled an awful lot of very difficult problems that people couldn't agree on on the first time. It's three. Okay, three. Well, it seemed like it was a lot more than that. But, but I'm wondering right now, all of the things that we're discussing here, and I'll be the first one to admit it, we're not going to resolve these today. We, we can bring them up to them. So might I suggest that if you've got other big picture stuff, that we get onto that so we can see more of the well, big I picture mean, basically, and, and keep these in mind yeah. for you to digest and bring back to us in a somewhat different format? We're pretty, we're, we're, we're near the end. Um, basically, you know, this is the notion of uh, that 90 degree parking, the uh, three lane section on Ocean Boulevard, uh, which and, and in this case, a signal at Highland, this is still one way eastbound. Uh, Church Street is one way uh, westbound. Both of these would be signal controlled, which you can't do under today's condition because you, you can't signal control what's there um, with the parking in the middle. So this allows you to control access to that parking. You would have kind of less cut through than, I mean, I, we were at one one of the meetings here and somebody said, well, there's no problem at Church Street. You just go down the parking lot and turn around and come back up and now you've got the right of way. It's like, yeah, but that's not how it's supposed to work. So I think this this scenario would, would at least clarify the traffic operations. You have a virtually unlimited uh, uh, queuing uh, capacity for the left hand turn to Church Street and you know it, it would function I think better than it does today because you have the ability to pull people you know assuming that they don't do what my mother-in-law does and like head up toward the beginning of the queue and then try to cut in um, that's uh, <laughs> I know they will what is, yeah, she was in front of me yesterday. <laughs> well, there's nothing we can do about that. That's 75 I mean, years of sucking on exhaust, right? That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is, yes. Let me ask you a question. It goes back to what Rusty was asking. Just so I have a good understanding, and probably others, if you're, you're talking right in this area, a three lane versus, so bringing down one lane and three lanes. Correct. If you went back to four, you wouldn't be able to do the parking. You wouldn't be able to do the parking at all. Well, you could do, you would lose 
half of that parking. And if you did then the uh, four lanes, the people that are on the sidewalk on the west side would then now have to cross four lanes Correct. of traffic. Correct. And I mean, right now, the way that it is today, they cross two lanes and then there's this kind of no man's land where there's parking and people don't really know where they're supposed to be going. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you cross two more lanes. So I guess it's better than crossing four lanes, but it's, you know, it's very ill-defined. Yep. Okay. Um, but you would, you may not lose half of the parking. You could conceivably go back to an angled parking scenario, and you know, I suppose you could get four lanes in here, but you wouldn't have room. You really need, if you're going to do two lanes in each direction, you know, there are places like at Church Street or uh, maybe not at Highland because that's that's outbound, but at Church Street, you really need a five lane section. Because you need to do turn lanes. Yes, if I remember correctly, uh, when we met with public safety, um, this area here, um, and correct me, gentlemen, if I'm wrong, Sorry, was the, the section where up here now, where Ocean Boulevard, north of the Ashworth, where we were saying that as an alternative, one of the alternatives was to move the parking out of the middle of the road and move it to the beach side. Yes, sir. Therefore, having the two-way uh, all on one side. And I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, public safety said that that probably that was point. a great area and we could probably, if we had to do this in phases and stages, that would be a good area to start. Is that correct? That is correct. I did give you comments on that. And I feel that uh, anybody who is coming to the beach and going to be using parking, especially on the north section like that, they don't want to cross. As it stands right now, they have to park and cross a minimum of two lanes. By doing that, you're reducing the crossing, which I think is brilliant. And I, I in my email, I even said, do that today. Yeah. Um, it's the it's the lower section that I have concern yep. about. And then the evacuation of that area, there's still, and, and this is to Mr. Sullivan's point, there's no, there's no change in how we're going to remove people from the area. We're just changing where they're going to be stopped. We need to remove them from the area. And, and I invite you down on the 4th of July. I'll buy you the well, coffee. Well, you know, come and see what it's like. <laughs> well, we're moving from the area, or more what we're talking about is you're just taking acceptable wait times in different places for the public, right? If I mean, yeah. it, you know, your other option that's not there is you, we want to pretty up Ocean Boulevard to make it better. It's a one-way lane. We have emergency uh, access lanes and keep Ashworth mm -hmm. two ways and do, yeah. do what we're doing there. People just going to wait. That's the other option we haven't talked about. I mean, right. when you're shoving the ten pounds into five pounds, something. Well, I mean, let me let me just be let me be clear. There, within this range of options, there is an option that keeps the traffic patterns essentially the same as they are today. And you know, if you think about it, this option is the same as what you have today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you have two lanes coming into that signal line, you know, and, and so this actually clarifies it and become, you know, it becomes, uh, I, I think it, it would function more efficiently than what you have out there today because you have no traffic control. And north here. of the Ashworth, just generally us talking here, this, we have no issues. We're on board. Right. With you. So, it's so, really so but, that. But, but to, to your concerns that you voiced, you know, I mean, we could do a two-lane southbound, two-lane northbound uh, uh, pair, but, you know, recognize <coughs> you, you need to deal with uh, with the parking supply and revenue concerns that Dredd has. We, uh, we have revenue concerns, too. Well, I, I think maybe Dredd should also consider that the safety issue should be... be it's no more, question. We're more important than Brian. And, and we're, so we're, we're putting, yeah, you know... I mean, you, you have legitimate concerns, they have legitimate concerns. So, uh, you know, the, the idea here is to find a consensus that works for, you know, everybody. Yeah. And, and one of the things, Jim, I'm sorry for a minute, but I, I, I need to clarify something because I was actually at that meeting with Dredd. And yes, the first discussion was that there could be a loss of 74 car spaces from Havel Street up to the playground. Right. Uh, but then we had this conversation that, okay, we understand that that's a lot of money for, for Dredd. However, Phil, who was at the meeting, um, also indicated and was very receptive 
of this idea uh, north of the Ashworth, moving the parking to the uh, beach side because he then gained back, and I think he got plus five. Yeah, more. this is 70, oh. 79 yeah. space. Yeah. So, so I, so I think uh, you know I don't I don't want people going away from this meeting saying that the dread is not partnering up with us. Um, and I, I think it's just important to point out that what we're trying to do is juggle spaces, car spaces, parking spaces, in and around the whole state park area right. so there's no loss of revenue. And I, and I think I think most of the people here understand that. And we, we heard that there were 79 spaces versus 72 that they were going to lose. And if it's one or two years, because you say you got to phase it in, I would rather have dread deal with that one or two years of phasing in or losing spaces before they gain the other ones to make sure that we we have we we can have the concerns of our our public safety and their public safety is saying that they well their 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 suggestion which you know i thought was a reasonable one was before you do the improvements on ocean boulevard before you do anything on ashworth <coughs> Do this. Fine. So yeah. yeah, it is fine. I mean, I that, that was that was that, perfectly reasonable. I think that creates a much better atmosphere than what, what we had before. With you know, narrow. But they down. they are not being yeah. obstruction obstructionist or you know. No, they, we're not saying that at all. We're not saying no, that. We're just all personal thoughts. The other thing is, if you start by putting this in first, everybody's going to think. Gee, they doubled the parking on the beachfront. <laughs> you know, great psychological. Advantage. You know, basically, you're not hitting the basic problem. The basic problem is there are too many cars at the beach. Right. It's a cash cow, that's right, for parking. Nobody takes that away from anybody. But the basic problem is people, if people are not in the cars, people in cars don't intermingle very well. Right. <laughs> and the same thing if you have people crossing three lanes or two lanes. <clears throat> when you go down Ashworth in the summer, it's a zoo with people crossing. It's very dangerous and people getting out. So the basic problem is we're just trying to do the five, the 10 pounds into the five pounds, we're not hitting the basic problem. The basic problem is you've got too many cars and it's gotta be one way or the other. It's gotta be people gonna wait if they have to drive their car down there and it's gonna take a lot of time. But you can't just keep Mickey Mousing. I mean, I'm thinking, I drive every day in and out of Boston. They spend a lot of money and a lot of studies on the tunnel. I sit for a half hour, three yeah. quarters of an hour in the tunnel. Yeah. You got, that's the basic problem. And I don't know how you deal with that problem, but you got to deal with the basic problem. I don't disagree with you. Uh, I mean, one one thing you know we're looking at is the potential of of, uh, of providing you know some transit connections. But even that in America in 2016 is not going to solve the problem. So uh, at least not in you know New Hampshire. Maybe one thing if it were. Venice Beach or something like that, where people are used to taking taking transit, we're just not. And um, so, you know, this is it, it's going to be a compromise. And and what we need to do is uh, find a solution that uh, everybody can live that everybody can live with. It may not be the ideal situation, but a solution that everybody can live with, because. You know, frankly, the, the the condition that's out there today is, you know, is far worse than any of these alternatives would provide. Yeah. Yes. I just don't want you to lose sight of the parking coming to pull off from my hotel. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to lose sight of okay. the pull off. Fair enough. Hotel. Fair enough. And it, you know, part of it depends on whether on on what the configuration of this intersection is. There may be a way that we could, you know, I'm accommodate sure that. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you are very, you're very persuasive. I, uh, I get that. <laughs> and, and again, I don't think anybody here is trying to be an obstructionist. I think we all want to see our beach get brought up to what it has been. Its potential is there. It's just when you can, when you cram that many people into that small area. You have fire load, you have right. police load. Uh, we're dealing with, with limited manpower. Um, and so we have to make sure that, that this doesn't make the problem worse. Right. And from what I'm hearing from our public safety people is the potential for making that three lanes and one lane would have the potential of making it worse. And I think if we can, um, these guys work down there, 
I worked down there for 30 years in the fire department, so I know the area. Uh, I, know, I know the deal with traffic down there. Um, I think that's what our concerns are. Not the concern that we don't want to see anything done, because we all want to see the beach brought up. You know, the town spent some money, the state spent some money. We want to see the sidewalks done, get it in there. But I think at, at a cost of, of making um, Ocean Boulevard one lane and making three lanes on Ashworth, I think that's detrimental to, to public safety and stuff. And, 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 and keep in mind that there's, there's one alternative that we've talked about uh, a fair amount of time, and that is in working with, with the state parks, is keeping Ocean Boulevard two lanes, um, being able to expand the sidewalk width, what, would, what we would eliminate with the two lanes of traffic the way it is today is that parking on right. the east side that's owned by Dredd. That's the 74 spaces that we're talking about. And so that we could actually still keep two lanes, have a sidewalk, right. uh, a much bigger width. Uh, even a, um, if I recall, Gordon, there's even a, an area where trucks could, could come in and deliver. That's correct. Um, and so we could still have the two two lanes going northbound on Ocean Boulevard, just eliminating that parking area on that right side, uh, uh, yeah, on the right side. Yeah, I don't think you mentioned about where the trucks could pull in and where you had the bump yeah, outs. I, I was just looking for uh, <coughs> that. I think I've got one of the earlier. Hey, John, while he's trying to find that, just on that, the elimination of those parking up front, I would be fully in favor of that because we've seen the improvement in the traffic flow in the area of the casino and the seashell. When we eliminated all that parking, it is safer for pedestrians to cross in those areas, even without the barriers, and it's easier for us to control the traffic without those cars on the side. So I think, you know. And they're not stopping to do parallel parking. I'm very yeah, interested right. in, in that formula. And if the state can make up the parking spots on the other end and the north end, yep. that's really what I would do. And you've had your the Ashworth is not very far away either. Yeah. Uh, I don't think people complain about. And that. you've had your uh, experiment with adding those uh, gates. Yeah, you know, d around the Fourth of July, where you, I think that this well. might help do something like I that too. It should be prettier. Yeah, it should be. I like the idea of the ballads with the rope and, and something mm -hmm. just nice, attractive. You're not putting Jersey barriers up there. You're putting yeah, them. right. Right. I think that could be. But I think that possibility has worked, oh, hasn't it, around. Chief? Uh, making it safer. Oh, absolutely. The fence, the <laughs> fence is channeling for pedestrians to crossing here. Because keep in mind what the law is. Pedestrians are supposed to yield to vehicles if they're not in a crosswalk. If they're not required to use a crosswalk. But if we channel them with the fencing, most people will be compelled and they'll use it, uh, which is much safer because then we can put out the traffic. Uh, the officers out there in the crosswalks and control when they cross. So that'll keep that'll also help keep the flow of northbound much quicker. Chief, do, do most people use the crosswalks that have been built uh, along with the parking area down there? You know, we made a big deal putting the flags up and the street names and everything. Um, it, it's a mess. Right? It, it, if you go north of, say, the state park facility, yeah, where the drop-off areas and all the way up to the Ashworth, they, a lot of them just dart out. Because there's really no barrier to stop. Because when people come up from the back, they come in from the beach and they want to get off the beach, and if they see a break between the cars, they go. Yeah. Which causes a lot of the problem. So this is this is a view of what we're talking about. This has two lanes northbound. It has a bike lane on the east side. Although I suppose the bike lane could be on the west side just as easily. You can see that there's no parallel parking here. We have. Uh, at the at the corners of the uh, of the letter streets, we have bump outs, and then we have this flex zone in here, which is between the bump outs. So you want to you want to do sort of bumped out uh, uh, sidewalks for two reasons. One is it's nice to have it has a traffic calming effect to sort of narrow down the roadway at the uh, at places, but it also keeps this from becoming a lane. Um, so, I mean, it is, I, I respect the fact that it's harder to plow 
But you know, like I said, it's a compromise. The uh, but this area is where trucks can pull in and unload and load and and so forth. And it is essentially a different uh, pavement type than uh, than the roadway surface itself. So. It kind of reads like a sidewalk, and the way that it's configured, it's not a big deal if people are out there walking. Uh, it's it's similar to uh, there are streets in downtown situations that are treated this way, and it's it's actually quite successful. Yes, right. This kind of looks like uh, Main Street in Concord, but I have, have always had a concern on all of this. A curbed sidewalk on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, I think, invites. A, a tremendous amount of injury and liability by people not paying attention to where they're going, stepping off the side, a broken ankle well, here, a strain. On the there. other hand, not yeah. having a curved sidewalk uh, invites people to get hit by cars. No, no, you you mentioned yourself, bollards in the street, sockets that you put in with a rope along there. That's all it takes to constrain the people so that they will stay on that side. Yeah, you, you can do use a different color. You can use a pavement or whatever, and that makes it much much easier. To do the snow clearance. But I also think that a, a curb, for drainage wise, affects mm -hmm. much better than having it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, but, so but you absolutely. bring it down to a low spot. You don't. I, I'm not yeah, with you on this, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not with you. you know, you on what, hap what happens? Well, right now we have a drainage problem where the, the sidewalk is the same level as the road yeah. right. and the water flows and right the water across. goes right in, and actually that's above the uh, the floor elevation so right so if, we, if you have a curb at least that gives the water right. a place to stop and run right and be collected and be so, collected correct but it can do the same thing uh, the other time. thing that's important and i know this shows people standing here if you don't have parking over on this on the east side of the street, you can turn that into a landscape area, and it would further kind of channelize pedestrians. So if you don't have, if you have a sidewalk on on the west side, and you don't have a sidewalk on the east side, people are going to cross where they're. You already have an eight camp. foot wide sidewalk out by the seawall. Right. So, exactly so right. You that's you that's can exactly make that right. A, Right. A but barrier so that it's it's less convenient to if, cross over. If you have parking on this side of the street, though, you need a sidewalk because those people need a place to be. Right, if it's on that side, but if you take that that where that bike path is instead of not parking, you don't need the sidewalk right. on that side. Right. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? Um, anybody from the uh, commission? Okay. Let me uh, let me just share with you that the commission, uh, William, myself, Gordon, will be continuing to work throughout the summer. Uh, also, once again, taking even up to this point the ideas and suggestions that people have made tonight, um, putting them all together, especially those new ideas that came up from Boar's Head up to Winnicunit, um, because I think that. Gordon, I you know I appreciate your your different um, alternatives up there because I, I think that's they were good um, and um, so come September uh, we will be having a, a beach commission meeting um, and I've instructed all of the commissioners to go back to their organizations throughout the summer to kind of still work through all of these ideas. Uh, be it the Rockingham Planning Commission, the Village District, uh, the Board of Selectmen, um, DOT, DREAD. Um, so we'll all be working with our constituent groups, if you will, throughout the summer, to, once, once again, to make sure that we get all of the information um, that we can provide um, so that we can then move to that next step, which is the engineering design. Rusty? Just what, while you're doing that, I, I, I applaud the, the efforts on the, uh, the commission and, and you guys are um, talking about that area north of Boar's Head. That's where I grew up. That's where I lived most of my life. Uh, you know, we always had a conversation about the lack of a bathroom at the Winnicott Road station, yeah. and it was always a problem cutting across. And I know somebody brought it up earlier, but while you're looking at that, that's a long stretch from, from High Street <laughs> all the way down to Church Street. Even and I think that that would give 
that area, especially if you put the parking <coughs> on outside, yeah. it gives you that area or the ability to do that. So why are you looking at that? Well, and and I, I don't know whether you heard this or not, but uh, that's one thing that Dredd was very interested in was another site for a for a bathhouse north of Church Street. Yeah. We had we didn't talk about the Winnicott Road area, but there certainly would be a that's space about, there. That's about yeah. halfway between yep. High Street and Church Street. So and that be... that's what the that's what the town the board of selectmen hears about constantly that there should be a bathhouse in that area for people mainly for people that are from Hampton too because that's the area where they right. go they walk. Right. and that's why it was important to carry this down to Winnicott Road. But one thing I'd like to mention, and I I think I'm right, William, um, when you when we first brought up about continuing up to Winnicott Road. I think the first thought from what I heard, unless I heard it wrong, was that it would pretty much stay the way it is with the four lanes, but now I see that you've looked at something a lot different. So I think that you've really, uh, to me, it's outstanding what, what I've seen here today because this wasn't what I expected to see. And I think it does open the possibility to what Rusty's talking about, about uh, something there. There's certainly much more green space, right. which I live right there. And let me tell you, there's so little green space that I won't even put my dog over near there because I know it must be filled with ticks. But now that Lisa will be able to spread out a little bit, and the sidewalks would be better. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of beauty that's around there, too. But I think that you've gone out of your way to have a different concept because I think when I first brought it up, you we're just going to leave those four lanes there. And this looks a lot better, and I, from what I can see, it's much more attractive. And I know that there was possibly some thought about having the roundabout right there at the end at Boar's Head. And I have talked to people that live around there. In fact, there was a gentleman here tonight that left a little early. Uh, a lot of people weren't in favor of that. And I think the roundabout possibility or something similar uh, at, um, at Winnicunnet. Winnicunnet is a much better idea. I own a piece of property right there at that intersection, and to me, I'd have to think of it fast, but I'm thinking at it first at the beginning about uh, King's Highway ending there. I think that's a good idea. I think it would improve that whole neighborhood there, and there are all the other exits that you can leave down at the numbered streets, and it would probably really make that whole community better. Um, and. It would give us an opportunity also to maybe do something. People complain constantly about the traffic. So if it didn't go all the way through there, there wouldn't be so many cars racing down King's Highway to, you know, go down Winnicunnet Road. And I, I think it's amazing what you've showed today. Thank you. Okay. Hearing no other comments, um, I'll close the meeting. And once again, thank you very, very much for coming. And Channel 22, thank you for airing it. Good. Hey, how you doing? See ya.